Okay. Button is gone. Now I can begin the extensive cleaning process to get rid of all the flux. That's going to just require scraping. Let me get the multimeter out of the way. Three pins make these a pain. Oh, you've done this before. That's pretty cool. You've done this on mice, or just you're talking about three pin switches in general? I finally got it. Um, so now I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol and a little artist paintbrush. I'm going to pour the alcohol into the cap. And then set the cap up on my desk so I won't accidentally knock it over. I'll put the alcohol up there too. Well out of my arm's reach. And I got a little artist brush here that I'm going to be able to dip into the alcohol and just start scraping away at the solder mess I left behind. Now, I'm using just traditional electronic solder from Radio Shack, but what I need is no clean solder, which is like what the pros use, and that stuff you don't have to spend 20 minutes cleaning up. This solder turns all dark, dark brown and murky. And isopropyl alcohol can't even get it off without help. You have to actually scrape it gently with an X-Acto knife and do like 20 passes or 30 passes of alcohol, scrubbing and scrubbing until you can finally get it all off. It's really bad. but I've got to be able to see what I'm doing. I gotta be able to see the traces. That's really my goal right now, is to be able to find the traces. My problem is I damaged some traces during the soldering, desoldering process originally few days ago. And now the 5 volt pin of the 3 pin switch does not have power. So I need to determine where it gets its power from on this circuit board. And I need to run a jumper to the 5 volt pin of the switch in order that it will get power and it will be able to short out from power to ground, thereby sending a clicking signal to the microcontroller. I wonder if actually lacquer thinner would be better than isopropyl alcohol. I might try that. I have some lacquer thinner here and I've watched a YouTube video where the guy used lacquer thinner to clean up the fluid left behind by electrolytic capacitors. Looking for a little cap to put the lacquer thinner into so I can dip it. Here we go, this will work. This is the cap for my Dremel sanding pads. So, I'm just going to spray the lacquer thinner 
into here. And then set it off to the side. And I'm going to dip in that. That should be more powerful. Maybe that'll remove my flux better. Um, it's a Logitech. Track, trackball mouse. Um, it's a discontinued version. I believe it was sold by Best Buy. In like 2005 or something. 2006. So it's a decade old mouse. I've had for a decade. And it's no longer being made. It's widely known as the best trackball mouse ever produced. Um, no, no modern day or presently produced trackball mouse comes even close. And this mouse you can get on Amazon for about $300 since it's discontinued and the demand's very high worldwide. The price has gone out of control. So it's definitely much better to just fix it. Plus I'm trying to learn electronics here, so... Alright. I tell you what, man. The paint thinner worked great. It's way, way better than using isopropyl alcohol. Now, once I get some high quality, more expensive flux, I'll be able to switch back to using isopropyl alcohol, but I knew paint thinner wouldn't be too bad for a circuit board because An electronics guru on YouTube uses it. So, I mean, this guy is unbelievable. So that's what gave me the confidence to try it. There's still flux in each mouse hole. Pinhole. Let's stick a sticking a suturing needle through. Alright, so the tip pin is ground. The rear one is nothing. The 
the middle one is power. Alright, the vehicle right here runs up to a vehicle by the power pin. Oh, wow. That's the one I shorted out earlier. That does not go. That goes to a transistor. LQ2. Q is transistor, right guys? Yeah, Q is transistor. L is inductor, R is resistor, Q is transistor. Well, the problem is the type of flux I'm using. It's rose and soldering flux, no spill paste by Radio Shack. And this stuff is extremely thick and does not come off easily once you heat it up. Alright, so after it gets to that through hole, it runs to one of the pins of, let's just agree to ignore that. It's not relevant to what we're trying to do. I'm just trying to, you know, gain information and learn as I go. Um, so yeah, I completely tore out all the traces. We're looking at the center pin that would have led to this thing if all the traces weren't completely removed. I mean the center via. So there is a via in the center just inside in the middle. Alright, so that actually runs along the top side to another via, which is closest to the edge of the board near the pins. Oh, and that runs to... Aha! The pin on the closest edge of the board on the forward side. So now, I can verify that with a continuity test using my multimeter. Yeah, I <laughs> I couldn't eyeball the trace leading to the 5 volt feed of the mouse button switch because it ran from a pin into a via which is a hole drilled through the circuit board that comes out on the other side of the circuit board and it came out underneath the switch so you couldn't even see where it came out and then it ran along the other side of the circuit board which is not visible under the switch to another via which then disappeared again back to the rear side where you can see it and you don't know where it came from and then it ran over to the switch's 5 volt feed and that all was torn out a lot of trace was torn out and there is no way that you can solder into a via that I know of. Once the via is gone, or um, once the trace is ripped out, you have to find a good place to solder your jumper wire to. And in my case, I have to solder directly to the pin that's leading to that switch to begin with. Alright, now I also learned something else, which is the little solder pads, the little square solder pads that are sticking out of the circuit board, those are not heat sinks. They're actually test points. 
which is pretty cool. Um, so I actually tore out the entire pad, the entire solder pad for the pin, and I tore out the test point, and I tore out the trace running between the solder pad and the test point, and I tore out the trace running between the via, which feeds all this, and the pad. So I tore out literally two millimeters worth of copper, which is just crazy. I just ripped it right out. And that just shows you how rough I was being. I would never worked with something at this microscopic of a scale. I was not using magnification. I was being very rough. And I had no idea how much damage I was causing. Now I have to get all scientific and zoomed in and crazy just to repair all the damage I caused. Damage that I had no idea I was causing. But... What a tremendous learning experience. What's my next move? I could solder in the button now. I could do that. Alright, the button's refusing to be properly seated. Um, so, some of the plastic on the button housing melted and slid down the shaft of the pins. And so, I have to actually melt or carve that away. I think I'm going to carve it away with my X-Acto knife. So, I'm going to get the mouse out of the way. This is now a button pin repair job. Each time I switch my job, it's best to just move everything from the previous jobs out of the way. I'm moving everything out of the way. For my own sanity's sake. The height of the button matters a lot. It has to be accurate to within like one one sixth of a millimeter in order for the mouse button to click and unclick properly once the cap once the lid to the mouse is reinstalled. So any of this plastic sticking up which is altering the overall height that the mouse button will rest needs to be removed it it will cause failure of the mouse to function properly that plastic just shot into my nostril that's nice I guess that'll be my breakfast. Using the same switch, um... No, none of the, none of the other mouse, mice I own use the same type of micro switch. I've opened them all up and checked already. Um... I ordered five new switches from China. Basically, you don't need to replace the switch. You just have to replace the switch tensioner spring. That's what the part that goes bad, not the switch itself. So, soldering in the switch shouldn't be an issue because I won't ever have to take it out again. Each time the switch goes bad, I'll replace the tensioner spring with one of the new tensioner springs which are on the way. The tensioner spring in this one is okay. It's okay. It's not great. So I'll be replacing the middle mouse tensioner spring and the right mouse button tensioner spring. But I will not be desoldering and resoldering these buttons anymore. The only reason I did that was so that I could 
swap out the middle mouse for the right mouse because the middle mouse is working better than the right mouse. And I would not have a middle mouse button for the month or whatever it takes for China to ship me the new button. Uh, and during that swapping procedure, I ended up tearing out a lot of traces and damaging the circuit board. So now I'm just going through and identifying the damage and installing a jumper to repair it and give power where power needs to be. Yeah, you get the springs by pulling them out of the same exact model switch and you can then install them inside the same switch, inside your old switch. It's a lot easier than desoldering and resoldering. It's literally like a, a two minute swap to put in the new spring. Okay, so this is where I need Kapton tape, but I don't have that. So... I'll just hold it with my hand, I guess. No, I don't even think I can do that. Let's see. Let me use this. <laughs> what the heck, man? Now I'm not able to get it in. Okay, I got it. Um. Alright, now we're ready. I got it taped into place. Alright, and I can solder the front pin to ground. That's the only one that didn't get the pad torn off. Let me show you what I got so far. Alright, so there's the three pins. You can see the tape across the middle. Um, now the top pin right there I can solder, but all the, the other two pins, I tore the traces off. You can see it's just green board around them. 
So I cannot solder those pins. There's nothing to solder it to. This tape this is just really fine tape that I'm taping it down instead. Now the center pin, I need to run a jumper from it to right here, this pin. This pin goes to it. So these output pins right here The far left one on the top row, I gotta jump to the middle pin of the switch. And you can see my tape is holding the switch down well. And then that's holding the rear of the switch down. The front of the switch can be soldered down by this top pin, which still has the pad to solder to. But the middle and rear one have nothing to solder onto. So that's the issue here. What a beautiful solder joint, man. I just crushed that. Wow. I almost made it look like I know what I'm doing there. How for the jumper? Mm. We need magnet wire. That's a whole new job. Okay, let's let's get ready for the new job here. Getting magnet wire. So magnet wire is very fine copper wire that's coated in polyester epoxy resin, a very thin insulative coat. So the total diameter of the wire is not much increased by the insulation. Unlike normal electrical wire where the insulation is probably quite a bit thicker than the wire itself. So magnet wire is used for creating inductors and transformers. So I'm going to go into an inductor or a transformer, whichever I find, and I'm going to extract some of the magnet wire and I'm going to use that as my jumper wire. Magnet wire does not, it's got insulation so it's not electrically conductive in the middle, which is important so it won't short anything on my circuit. but wherever you solder it, you can melt away the edges of the insulation exposing the bare copper. So you just stick the soldering iron onto the edge, melts away the little bit of glue, and then you can solder that joint. But the middle of the wire, although it looks like copper, is coated and it's not conductive, so it won't short anything. So that's used for creating trace repairs. And so I need magnetic wire, and I don't have any as far as like a spool of it goes but what I do have is old electronics boards with transformers and inductors on it and I can unwind the magnetic wire from one of those so that's where I'm gonna source the magnetic wire I'm gonna go ahead and go with this transformer magnet magnet wire so I have to desolder this transformer to get it so that's our job we have to desolder a transformer um, Boom, baby! Alright. Um. Yes, sir! Alright, so we just removed some kind of casing addition now we've got access to pull these wires and start unwinding them
Let's just focus on this one wire. Alright, we can actually remove this part too. Unexpected. Oh wow. Now the whole thing rotates, guys. Ha! We've got basically. a wire wheel now. Let's see. We can get all the magnet wire we want forever now. Tucking away wires that are sticking out from this thing. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. I don't even need that much. I barely need any, actually. So I'm going to reel it back in. I just need a small quantity. Um... Something like that should be good. Here you can see what we've got so far. Um, wrong thing. Okay, right here. So I, I connected the magnet wire to the far left pin here. Like that. And now I'm going to attach it to the center pin. Hold on a second. I'm going to attach it to this pin right here. So I'm just, I'm just kind of removing the insulation from it in this area. So we've connected from there to there. I get to snip off the rest of this. I'm going to be snipping right here. So I just soldered that on. I'm going to be testing the continuity from here to this pin. So if I touch it, the multimeter right here on this pin, and right here, it should beep if they are connected electronically. Okay, it is passing the continuity test. Show you guys what we got. We got the wire jumping from right here to right here. It's not too tall, but it does run above the circuit board. Just to be safe, it's not touching the circuit board, but it's no taller than the pins. So it shouldn't cause any clearance issues with laying flat on the bottom of the mouse. So now all we got to do is cut off the tip, this wire here, and we got it. Okay. I am going to be an electronics guru 
You guys just wait and see. I got the skills, and I'm gaining the knowledge and experience to add. There you go, that's our jumper. Beautiful, is it not? Okay. <laughs> Guys, left mouse button is back, baby. <laughs> if you don't believe me, check it out. Um, so here's my other mouse. Here we go. So I'm able to move the mouse around, right? And I'll let you see my hands using the mouse. Okay, here's left click. Um, well, let, let me click over here. Here's left click. Alright. Now here's right click. Here's left click again. Copy. Here's right click. Here's left click. Here's right click. Here's left click. There we go, guys. Boom. Boom. <laughs> oh, man, we did it. We did it, Reddit. Gosh, that feels freaking good, man. That feels dang good. Nobody thought I could do it. Everybody said, throw your mouse away. It's garbage. But guess what? Guess what? You underestimated me. And you guys continue to underestimate me. Over and over and over, you continue to underestimate me. And let me tell you, that's a mistake. It's a mistake to underestimate me. You'll find that out. The robot's gonna happen. The electronics are gonna happen. Everything I say that's gonna happen is gonna happen. And this is just another bit of proof that I am a very capable person how many hours? Um, I didn't keep track. I have no idea. I'll be editing and uploading all the footage for this repair job to YouTube. So we'll, fi we'll find out when we go through the footage and add it all up. It's harder to know how many hours when I didn't do it all in one day. Oh man. Okay, I gotta. I had to tuck the USB cord underneath this front uh, circuit board. Ok, 
her. You know, the first repair you've ever done on electronics, especially microscopic scale electronics, I don't think time is really a big deal. You you gotta consider that I needed to learn about this stuff. Like, I'm completely new to all of this. So you can actually track down where everything's heading and then verify it with a continuity test. Ha <laughs> ha! 